Welcome to the Ace Pilot Academy. Today, we will be learning about turbochargers. Did you know that as atmospheric pressure gets lower with an increase in altitude, piston engines drop in performance? This is due to the engine's intake air containing less oxygen. To compensate for the performance loss in higher altitudes, the most efficient method of increasing horsepower is by using a turbocharger. A turbocharger system provides additional air for the engine's intake by harnessing energy from the engine's exhaust gases. This is especially important for higher altitudes where engine performance is lower due to lower atmospheric air pressure. A turbocharger consists of two main elements, a compressor and a turbine. The compressor houses an impeller that turns at a high rate of speed. As intake air is drawn across the impeller blades, the impeller accelerates the air, allowing a large volume of air to be drawn into the compressor's housing. The impeller's action subsequently produces high pressure, high density air that is delivered to the engine. To turn the impeller, the engine's exhaust gases are used to drive a turbine wheel that is mounted on the opposite end of the impeller's drive shaft. By directing different amounts of exhaust gases to flow over the turbine, the amount of energy extracted by the exhaust gases can be changed to cause the impeller to deliver more or less compressed air to the engine depending on the boost required. The turbocharger system uses a wastegate to control the amount of exhaust gases used to turn the impeller. The wastegate is an adjustable butterfly valve installed in the exhaust system to vary the mass of exhaust gas flowing into the turbine. When closed, most of the exhaust gases from the engine are forced to flow through the turbine. When open, the exhaust gases are allowed to bypass the turbine by flowing directly out through the engine's exhaust pipe. The position of the wastegate is governed by a pressure sensing control mechanism linked to an actuator that uses engine oil to move the spring-loaded wastegate position. The actuator is automatically positioned simply by changing the position of the throttle control. No throttle adjustment is required with changes in altitude as the pressure sensing control mechanism simplifies turbocharging to one control, the throttle. A malfunction of the wastegate can cause overboost or underboost. Overboost is when the wastegate remains closed and produces a pressure that exceeds the engine's limitations. Overboost may produce severe detonation due to the leaning effect of increased air density. If takeoff power is applied while the engine oil temperature is below its normal operating range, the cold oil may not flow out of the wastegate actuator quickly enough to prevent an overboost. The pilot should advance the throttle cautiously to prevent exceeding the maximum manifold limits to help prevent overboosting. Underboost is when the wastegate remains open and does not provide enough boosted air to the engine. Underboost can also occur if there is an exhaust leak, creating a hazardous situation and the pilot should shut down the engine or if continuing to operate the engine, use the lowest power setting and land as soon as practicable. Because the temperature of a gas rises when it's compressed, turbocharging causes the temperature of the induction air to increase. To reduce this temperature and lower the risk of detonation, turbocharged engines use an intercooler. The intercooler is a small heat exchanger that uses outside air to cool the hot compressed air before it enters the engine. Turbochargers have the ability to provide an engine's rated sea level horsepower from sea level up to the engine's critical altitude. As an aircraft equipped with a turbocharging system climbs, the wastegate is gradually closed to maintain the maximum allowable manifold pressure. At some point, the wastegate is fully closed and further increases in altitude cause the manifold pressure to decrease. This is the critical altitude, the maximum altitude at which a turbocharged engine can produce its rated horsepower. Above the critical altitude, power output begins to decrease like it does for a normally aspirated engine. A pilot flying an aircraft with a turbocharger should be aware of system limitations. A turbocharger can operate at high rotational speeds while at high temperatures. To achieve high rotational speed, the bearings within the system must be constantly supplied with engine oil to reduce the frictional forces and high temperature. To obtain adequate lubrication, the oil temperature should be in the normal operating range before high throttle settings are applied. In addition, the pilot should allow the turbocharger to cool and the turbine to slow down before engine shutdown. Otherwise, the oil remaining in the bearing housing will boil and cause hard carbon deposits to form on the bearings and shaft, which will rapidly deteriorate the turbocharger's efficiency and service life. Let us review. Turbocharger systems provide boosted air pressure to the engine. The compressor houses an impeller that allows a large volume of air to be drawn into the intake. The turbine drives the impeller in the compressor by harnessing energy from the engine's exhaust system. 
The wastegate is installed in the exhaust system to control the amount of energy that the exhaust gases provide to the turbine. Turbochargers can create a condition of overboost where too much boost is provided to the engine, which can cause severe engine damage. Underboost is when there is insufficient pressure being produced by the turbocharger. The hot boosted air flows through an intercooler to help cool down the air before entering the engine for performance. An aircraft's critical altitude is where the turbocharger cannot provide enough boost for the engine to provide sea level horsepower at higher altitudes. For proper operation, engine oil needs to be warmed up prior to takeoff, and turbochargers need to be sufficiently cooled prior to engine shutdown. Thanks for joining us at the Ace Pilot Academy. See you next time.